Right, so uh, today we are going to start a new chapter, which is an application on rigid body, and we will be studying the Newtonian kinetics of uh, rigid bodies. So let's see what we have here. So when we talk about Newtonian kinetics, so the very thing that comes to your mind is just like the sum of the forces on the body will be equal to the sum of the masses multiplied by the acceleration, like what we did uh, before in the uh, particle Newtonian uh, kinetics. But here, in particle Newtonian kinetics, you only have a particle. It doesn't have like a mass like this. So there are hundreds or millions or, or billions of particles in this mass. So uh, and the acceleration at any point on this mass could be different. So what we need to deal with here, we will be talking when we are referring to uh, rigid bodies and doing Newtonian kinetics, we will be referring to the center of mass of the body. So the sum of the forces on the body will be equal to the sum of the masses multiplied by the acceleration of the center of mass of this body. And with uh, rigid bodies, we will have another similar equation, which is the moment about the center of mass. So we can call it mg. So let's call the center of mass g. So sometimes I, I will write when I say a, this should be equal to a g. So I could put this par on the a, which means that the acceleration of the center of mass, or I can write it as a sub g. So that means that the also the acceleration of the center of mass. So in particles, we didn't talk about moment because it's a very small and it doesn't have any moment. Like you cannot take the moment at the center of a very infinite uh, particles. But with rigid body, you have a lot of points that you can't take the moment about. So you, you have the center of mass, it could be in a point here, so you can't take the uh, moment about uh, any point. So, so we will have the equation, which is the moment, uh, 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 the moment of, of this body. So the sum of the moment on this body will be equal to the I bar multiplied by alpha. So I bar is called the center, uh, sorry, the mass moment of inertia. Alpha, as we know, it's the angular acceleration. And that makes sense. So the first equations measure the potential of the body to make translation. And the second equation measure the potential of the body to make rotation. And when we talk about a body, so guys, can you see uh, my mouse like this? Yes, we yes, can. The okay. So if this body has some forces and, and like this forces allow this body to move, so this depends on the mass of this body. So if the mass is very big, so it will move like a very small displacement. But if the mass is very small and we have the same amount of force, it will keep moving much, much longer distance. So this is the mass controls the motion, the translational motion of the body. But when we talk about the rotational motion of the body, so we are talking about the uh, mass moment of inertia, which you guys learn it from statics. So for example, if we have this roller and if we want to measure the potential of this roller to make a rotation, so we talk about the, uh, uh, the mass moment of inertia. So. Uh, for the mass moment of inertia, as I told you, it measures the potential of a body to make rotation. And this depends on the distribution of the mass across the body. So if we have something like that and something like that, so the ruler will have more potential to rotate than my mouse. Why? Because the mass is distributed uh, way from the uh, axis of rotation. But here, the mass is, is not distributed away, just like it's bulky and it's almost on my hand. So if I lift the pose, the my ruler will have more potential to make rotation. And this is what our two Newtonian equations are doing. So 
the, uh, the first equations is one, is measure the potential of the body to make translation and we use the mass of the body. And the second equation, it measures the potential of the body to make rotation. So we got the moments by multiplying the uh, mass moment of inertia by the angular uh, acceleration of this body. So this is the most two equations that we will be handling in this chapter. And you guys are familiar with the first one as we used it in particles. And we will have more applications on the second one uh, uh, using the rigid body. So we will be using both of them in uh, uh, defining the rigid body uh, uh, force analysis. So let's define how can we get the mass moment of inertia. So let's talk about more about the mass moment of inertia. Right, so the mass moment of inertia is, as I told you, and let's actually distinguish between the mass moment of inertia and the area moment of inertia. Okay, so the mass moment of inertia, as I told you, it resistance to rotation. So like resistance to rotation. And the area moment of inertia is the distribution of the area in a cross section. And also the mass moment of inertia is the distribution of the mass in a cross section, but it's also measured resistance of rotation. And also the area moment of inertia measured resistance of rotation, but it's like not rotation, it's like uh, the, the section to have some deformation distribution of mass, sorry, distribution of area across area, across in a section. Actually, let's write this distribution of mass across a body. It will be better because Distribution of mass across body. And we usually use the mass moment of inertia in dynamics of bodies, like what we are going to do. And actually, I have been using the area moment of inertia across my career because I have been teaching uh, structure engineering applications, and we always use the area moment of inertia to calculate the stiffness of bodies, to calculate, uh, to do also some solid mechanics. So if we, like for example, if I have a bridge and the bridge has an, a beam like this, and I want to design like this cross section to calculate, uh, I want to design this cross section such that it can carry the loads on this bridge in terms of cars and people and everything. So we calculate the moment and do some analysis. We also need the, in a, the stiffness of the section. And we uh, the stiffness is a function of the area moment uh, of inertia. And for dynamics, we need the mass moment of inertia because we, we have a moving bodies and the moving bodies, we will need to know the potential of the mass to make rotation and the potential of the mass to make translation. So this is the difference between them and they are not the same, they are not equal. So for the mass moment of inertia, we have I is equal to the integration of R squared dm. So if we have a body like this, and we want to get, we want to have the the mass moment of inertia about this axis. Like let's call this y axis. So what we will do, we will pick a very tiny mass here, 
and we will get this mass. And if we know the function of this body, we will integrate the multiplication of this mass, the distance from this axis, and it should be perpendicular to this axis. So because I'm getting I, Y, and uh, I integrate this R square multiplied by dm over the mass of the entire body. So I should know the function dm. Or as we know that the mass is equal to the density multiplied by volume. So the d mass will be equal rho is constant rho dv. So it will be something like this. So I can integrate over the volume R square so let's get the row outside. So it will be R square dv. So you either this and this, and we will actually be dealing with volumes. So this is the one that we will uh, be using. OK, so this is for the uh, mass moment of inertia. And actually, so let's call this IM. And if I want to get the area, moment of inertia. So it's the same thing, but it's R squared dA, not dm, because it's an area moment of inertia. All right, so this is the definition of the mass moment of inertia. And I expect you guys have some background from the static class that you took, I think, last semester. And uh, uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is the theorem of parallel axes. Let's call it here. Barrel. Okay, for the barrel axis theorem, if like for example, same body here, and you got the I bar. So let's call when we are talking about the uh, the mass moment of inertia about the CG of the body. So it will be I bar. But if we want to get the mass moment of inertia about another axis like y dash here. So it is the original, so let's call it here i about any axis of interest. It will be i bar, the i bar, the one that you have from first, plus the mass multiplied by d square. So you have this mass. And then you will have the CG, like let's assume it's here. So it will be, this is D. And so you multiply the mass of this body by the D square. So you can get the uh, moment of uh, inertia about any desired axis. So let's put this. So this is the distance between two axes. All right, so this is the mass moment of inertia about any desired axis. Mass moment of inertia about any desired axis. All right, so, and the third thing is the composite bodies, so. So for composite bodies, sometimes you might be given in the problem a body like, so let's assume that this is x axis and this is y axis. And you have a body that has a rectangle shape and there's another triangle and it's voided with a circle here. And this is your body. something like that. So if you want to get the mass moment of inertia of this body, so the I about any axis will be equal to the sum of the I bar, which is the uh, mass moment of inertia about the centroid plus the MD square of each one of these bodies. So if I can divide this one into three bodies, I have triangle. I have rectangle and I have circle. So this is one, two, and three. But make sure that you have one and two in positive sign. And this is positive. 
and you have the circle in negative sign. Yes, there is no a mass moment of inertia that should be negative for anybody because if I have anybody, the mass moment of inertia is always positive. But for this example, we use the trick of the negative mass of uh, moment of inertia so we can solve the problem like you solve this as rectangle like this, but in reality, this is not a perfect rectangle because we have a circle inside. So we subtract the mass moment of inertia of this circle out of this triangle. So uh, the, uh, the cut out volumes result in negative mass moment of inertia and we should be included with a negative sign. Okay, does anybody have any questions so far? Right, so uh, I'll move to the radius of gyration. So the radius of gyration is something like uh, you have the mass moment of inertia is something like that i equal the integration of r squared dm and this is integrated over the mass of the body and we make this quantity equal to what's called k squared multiplied by the mass of this body and the radius of gyration is k about any axis of interest okay let's see what does this mean so this means if you have x y axis and you have this body like this and if you want if you have the 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 eye of this body about y axis what we do is that we expand this body like a very thin bar like this has the same mass of this body and it's a so the mass is uniformly distributed from the y-axis so you don't have something like that so the mass is keep it changing while you are away from the y-axis so what we make is we get the distance of this distributed mass that should result in equal um, uh, inertia about the y-axis so the k square multiplied by the mass should be given you uh, the uh, the i so it's something similar let's assume that the uh, the mass is uniform about y axis is not a changing as you move so each part of this has r like this a slice has different r with different mass and this a slice but what we do here is the mass is kind of uniform is not a changing as you move away from the y axis and it's at uniform distance k. So all of these are constant. So it will result in k squared multiplied by m. And we use this expression in in a very in the very thin sections. Like if you uh, if you guys like uh, specialized in civil engineering and taking a steel class. So we usually use to define angles based on the radius of gyration. So we either use the uh, moment of inertia or we use the radius of gyration uh, k so k is equal to m sorry will be equal to i over m all of this is under this root so this is k so in the problem if you are given uh, the radius of gyration, so it's almost the same same thing if you're having the mass and the radius of gyration, so you can get the uh, mass moment of inertia, or you might given in the problem, you might given the dimension of the, of the body, so you can get the uh, uh, mass moment of inertia. So if you are given the radius of gyration and the mass, you don't, you don't need the uh, dimension of the body because you can get I based on the information get to you. So uh, so just make sure if you are given the problem K, you should be able to use this to get I. Okay, so this is for the radius of gyration and the last property that I want to talk about is the center of percussion. So for the center of percussion, it is something like, 
So let's define the center of percussion. So the center of percussion is the point at which the impact produces no reactive shock at the point. So if you have a hammer like this, or a, or a baseball bat or a, a, a golf club or any of these, something that will hit a pole and like this hammer is going to hit a nail. So the CG of this hammer is something like here or here. And the uh, center of percussion is something here, like there's a, a, a center at some location here. If you hit the nail at this, in a line that is barrel to the center, there will be a minimal or like no reactive shock at the uh, baseball uh, bat or the uh, golf club or even uh, a hammer that hits a nail. So let's see how can we get the center of percussion. So if we want to get like, let's assume this is point O and we want to get the center of mass of this entire body. So we know the center of mass of each one of these, of each one of these parts like this. So the center of mass of this part is here. Let's assume that this is part one and this is part two. And this is the center of mass. So it's easily to get the, let's assume it, it's X bar. So let's assume that the center of mass is a location here. And let's call it X bar. If you want to get X bar, as you learn it from a uh, static course, it will be the sum of the masses multiplied by their x and then this should be the x bar like um, this one x bar of each mass and let's call it i over the entire mass of the body like m1 plus m2 so you will get the x bar the center of mass and once you get this you can get the center of percussion and we call it q node and q node is equal to the i about 0. 0.0, so q, we means that the, 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 the distance from the center of percussion at this location from 0. 0.0. And we need to get the i about 0. 0.0 over the mass multiplied by the x bar of this body. So we get the x bar and we get the entire mass of the, the body, so the total m. So this will give us the, <clears throat> the center of uh, percussion. <clears throat> Does anybody have any question on the radius of gyration, the center of percussion? Actually, we will not be using the center of percussion like uh, regularly in this course, but sometimes in the problems, you will be given the radius of gyration. So you will need to understand this concept. And also you should know how to get the, uh, ma the mass moment of inertia for composite bodies and use the barrel axis theory in the, uh, the problem solving. I have a quick question on the center of percussion. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, so the X bar is just the um, center of mass from the point O, correct? Exactly. Okay, awesome. I was just a little confused on that. Oh yeah, so yeah, so you we will first define the center of mass. Not about so it, our body here is two parts. So you will have to define the center of mass for all this uh, body, like as a system. And this okay. you can get it from this two masses. Okay, thank you. Did, did you guys take these things in the aesthetics, like? Or we we really didn't well, at least I didn't do a whole lot of the stuff in statics. Um, oh. So I, we did guys, a little bit of the um, mass moment of inertia, but not not very much of it. Okay, because I I can see here in one of the chapters. So yeah, here in the um, force system equilibrium. Oh uh, yeah, center of gravity and centroid. So this chapter wasn't included in statics. Yes, we did do that chapter. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds good. So let's just solve a quick example on, okay, so let's just see what is this. Yeah, so in the exam on the uh, dynamics equation sheet that you have, you will find, yeah, so here's the dynamics equation sheet that you have, something like that. 
and you will be given the mass moment of inertia for some bodies that help you to solve some problems. So you will have the IX uh, for the, the mass moment of inertia for a sphere, slender, and you will have a slender rod and also a thin circular disc, thin plate and thin ring. So I think you, uh, in your homeworks or in the exams, you might need one of these. And actually, you will be given about all the axes, like for the sphere, because it's a uniform body about X, Y, and Z. So you will have I, X, I, Y, I, Z uh, are the same. Uh, for the slender, uh, the X axis is the same like the Y axis, but the I, Z is different. And for the slender rod, so we assume that this rod is very thin. So like, like my pen, it's like th th slender rod. So the R is almost zero. So if you substitute in the equation of the slender with R is equal to zero, so I, Z, Z will uh, <clears throat> be equal. Okay, so this is i x yeah i z z will be equal to zero and you will have i x x is equal to i y y and you are given all these problems and actually for some of them you will be given the mass moment of inertia about the centroid like this slender bar and also you will be given the mass moment of inertia at the bottom point at other points like the one at the bottom uh, which is different so it's something like uh, let's assume that this is my slender rod and you getting the mass moment of inertia at the middle, which is the center of mass of this rod. So the potential of this mass to, uh, to make rotation is not the same if I'm holding it from the bottom. So can you see it wants to, to rotate? So it will be bigger if you are taking the mass moment of inertia down there. And if you are taking the mass moment of inertia of like away from this body, it will be much more because you're adding another term to the your calculation, which is the mass multiplied by d square. So you will find the d square of the center of mass from your body to get the mass moment of inertia. So as soon as you are moving away from your body, so the mass moment of inertia will be much, much higher. It's like you, you have a, a, a very a metal pole uh, on a ball on this body, like a mass here. If you add a mass away here, it will make this body more to rotate and add a more a mass moment of inertia to this body. And that's what happened here. Like you will have IXX and IYY is a one over 12 M multiplied by L, by L squared. But if you are getting the mass moment of inertia at the lower point of this rod, it will be one third. That means it increased like, um, um, it increased like four times. Yeah, it increased four times. If you multiply this by four, it will give you one over three. So it moves from one over 12 to one uh, over three. And uh, so this is for the bar and uh, for the uh, thin circular disc, you have IX uh, and IYY about the center uh, of mass of this body. And also you have IZZ. And in this, I want to mention what is the difference between uh, all of these. So, for example, uh, the IXX, let's assume that this is my cross section. So, uh, okay, let's take this. All right, so can you see, you guys, my clipboard? Um, I can see the paper, but not what's on it. Okay, so... So, okay, so let's see back to the ruler. So can you see my ruler? Yes. Okay, so first this ruler, let's assume that this is the x-axis and uh, uh, and uh, like it has a cross section. So this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and the vertical one is the z-axis. So let's see the moment of inertia about each one of these. So if, if I want to get the moment of inertia about the y axis, so I'm, 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 I'm talking about this axis, so it will be this rotation direction. If I want to get the moment of inertia about the x axis, which is the one like this, so it will be this direction. If I want to get the moment of inertia about the z axis, which is the vertical one, so it measures this direction, like this body, the potential of this body to make this rotation to spinning 
like this. And this is similar, like for the disk, you have IXX and IYY is the same because it's a circle. And the IZZ, uh, it's a different because you are measuring the potential of this body to rotate. And uh, for the rectangle or thin plate, it's IXX 1 over 12 MB squared. And I want you to notice something. The B is the, is the line perpendicular to X, not the line in the direction of X. So if you, as you can see for the sim plate, X is perpendicular to P. And that's what here in this roller. So uh, it's the potential of this body. Like if, if this is my X direction, so it's the potential of this body to rotate. So I'm using the line perpendicular to the X axis. And, and actually that looks rational because if I left my roller, the first motion that will do is that the moment about X axis because it has I X higher than I Y because the other dimension is very thin, it's almost zero. So it will not rotate about Y axis because A is like if you look at the thin plate, A is almost zero. So it doesn't rotate about A, but it, it makes rotation about X axis because the dimension is bigger. And, <clears throat> and also it doesn't make like, uh, it doesn't make a spinning because we have much more higher potential to make moment about the Y axis. So this is how we get the IXX and IYY. So you will have to be careful about which dimension that you will use. You are having IXX, so you will use B square and IYY, you will use uh, the line perpendicular to Y, which is A. And IZZ is uh, 12, 1 over 12 M A square plus B square. And also there's a one for the thin ring. So if we want to like have uh, uh, the, like let's work the IZZ for the cylinder, if we want to prove it. So the I, so let's, so here's our cylinder and we want to get the moment of inertia about the Z axis. So let's write an example here. Okay, for this example, we will put the general rule, which will be the integration of the R squared dm. But here, we will not be able to solve this body as a one bulk. So we will like take a slice in this body and solve it and integrate it from zero up to R. So that's what, what happened here. So if I take a cross section in this body at this location, we will find our slices looking something like this. So this is our slice. And this slice, the center of this slice is at distance r, and it has a thickness of dr. So let's get the dm for this slice. dm is equal rho multiplied by dv, and the d value, the dv of this slice will be something like if you take this slice and expand it, like it will be something like this. Like I fold it, unfold it, and it will be, and this will be two pi r, so this line, and this line will be the height of the slender edge, and it has a thickness dr. So if I want to get the d volume, it will be the two pi r multiplied by h multiplied by dr. So this is the, the DM. Okay, so let's put this here. It will be the integration of R squared multiplied by two by R multiplied by H multiplied by DR. And we don't want to forget that we have rho because this is only the volume and rho will make it mass. Okay, so we can have this out to rho multiplied by two pi h and we will only integrate r cube dr and this should give us rho multiplied by two pi h 
and this will be r to the power four over four. And we will integrate from r equal to zero to r equal to the radius of the circle because we will have a slices from here up to the end of the circle here. So the r starts from zero up to r. So this finally will be two pi rho h r to the power over four. Okay, let's get the uh, volume of the cylinder. The volume of the cylinder will be by r square multiplied by h. And actually we can extract the volume from here. We can extract by and we can extract r square from here and we can extract the h from here. So this will be and we can um, cancel this too with this four it will give us one half here. And this should be equal to one half and by r square h will be the volume multiplied by rho. So we cancel by cancel h and cancel r square from r to the power four. So it will be r square. And we know that the volume multiplied by the rho is the mass. So it will be half the mass multiplied by r square. And we are getting i z z because this is the i about the z axis. So i z z is equal to half m r square. And you can actually get any of these like i y y and i uh, x x from this. So this is the i z z. If you look at the slender, you have i x x, i y y, and i z z is equal to half m r square. And that's what we got. And similarly, you can do this for all of these uh, bodies. All right? Does anybody have any questions on the center of mass? Okay, so let's solve another problem on the mass moment of inertia. For the mass moment of inertia, so let's assume that we have a hammer that has And this hammer is attached like have a rod like this. And it's not like a hammer, it's something like uh, two bodies in, but it has the shape of the hammer and there is a hinge at this location. And let's actually make this hinge a little farther here. And the distances that we have, this is two foot, this is three foot, and this is one foot, and this is one foot. So you have all the dimension, and I'm telling you that this is a thin rod. So we will neglect the R of this rod, but you have the full dimension of the other bodies. And let's assume that this is body one and this is body two. And what is required in this problem is to, number one is to get the uh, I about O, the mass moment of inertia about this point O. Number two is to get the radius of gyration Number three, the center of percussion. Okay, so the uh, strategy to solve this is to divide this body into two bodies and you get the mass moment of inertia about the centroid of each one of these bodies. And actually, I can say that this is the centroid of this body because it's half distance and this is the centroid of the second body. So this is J1 and this is J2. And actually it's better that you construct a table to have all the informations here. So let's 
this is the number of body. So this is body number one, this is body number two. And you will get the I bar of each one of these bodies and the mass of each one of these bodies and the D square. And finally, you sum the I bar plus MD square for each one of these bodies. So what I will do, I will get the moment of inertia about this centroid and transform it to IO by summing MD uh, square. So let's get the mass moment of inertia of each one of these bodies. So let's get I1 bar. So I1 bar, it's a, a, we can assume it, it's a thin plate. So does anybody know what the axes that I will be considering for each one of these body? Is it the X or Y or Z axes based on the rotation about 0.0? It would be the Z axis if that's the one that's, that's up in the air. Exactly. Why? Because um, looking at the body, the the like, if this is my uh, rod, so I'm looking at the one. So so let's let's be like, uh, I mean like, let's be precise because each one of these bodies has different axes. So if I'm talking about the, let's look here first. So for this plate, which represent our first body, like this, we are talking about rotation about the perpendicular uh, axis like this. So it's the Z axis. But for the thin rod, the thin rod is something like that. So which axis we will be talking about? If it's a Z axis, it will be zero. But for this rod, given that this is the set of axes, so the X, Y axis is, is the something like this so is it going to be this is the x this is the y and this is the z something let's throw it here if this is our thin rod something like so this this is the z axis and this is X, Y axis. So this is the Z axis as given here because you, you will need to be precise which axis based on Z's. So the Z axis here is not the axis that will work for this body because this body is rotating about Y axis, something like that. So we'll be using IY for this body, but for the first body, it will be the, uh, uh, the z axis because the x axis is something like that and the y axis is something like that and the z axis is the one out of the plane so it's rotating about z axis so i1 will be equal based on the z axis of the thin plate i will go here and you will find it it's 1 over 12 m a squared plus b squared and and actually uh, let's give some masses here means that this is 12 pounds and this is three pounds four pounds okay so we got the masses so one over 12 and we will have 12 pounds over 32.2 because weight to mass and a squared plus b squared so it will be one plus one is square, and this should give you 0 0.062. So this is slug square, because the I is a mass multiplied by distance square, and this should be the mass in US unit, it will be slug, and the distance is feet square. So this is for I1, and I think you guys agree with me. Does anybody have any concern about or any issue that we are well using the I about the Y or X axis for the rod? Because the rod is rotating about X like this, not about Z, it's not a spinning. The rod is not a spinning like this. The rod is going to rotate about the axis perpendicular. Uh, to it, so it will be uh, I X axis, which is one over twelve ML square. 
So I2 R1 over 12 ML squared. Mass is 4 over 32.2. And the L of this body is 5 foot, 12B squared. When you multiply this, it should give you 0.259 slug feet squared. So we got the I bars. So we can put them here. So the first body is 0 0.062, 0 0.259. The mass of the first body is the 12 pounds over 32.2. So let's get the D from here. So from some geometry, when you do some geometry, you can get the distance from zero up to the center of mass of this body. So you have this from here is two foot and you have the center of mass at the half distance of the length of this body, which is 2.5 foot. So this will be 0.5. So this is body two. So this is 0.5 square. And let's get this distance. So this distance from here, okay. So we know that this is two foot and we have three and we have 0.5. So it will be 3.5 square from this. So we got the D square. So right now we can get the um, the I plus M D square. So if we will use the parallel axis theorem, I about O will be equal to I bar plus M D square. And this will be applied for everybody. Uh, so this will give us 4.627 for the first body. And the second body will be point Two nine when we do the submission and the units are slug feet square and the uh, this is for the each body separately and if we want to get for the entire system so we will sum the body one and body two about point oh so we get the uh, mass moment of inertia for body two about o and body one about o and some of them will be four point six two seven plus point two nine and this should give you 4.97917 slug feet. So we got IO, which is the first requirement. If we want to get the radius of gyration, so it will be, we know that IO is equal to K squared multiplied by the entire mass of the body. So if I want to get the M, it will be M1 plus M2. And when you sum of both of them, it will be 4.4969 9 slug. So you can get K root I node over M K will be equal to 3.146 and it's a distance unit because it's radius. So this is K. If we want to get the uh, center of percussion, so basically you will calculate Let's put here center of percussion. For center of percussion, you will need to calculate M1, D1. And M2, D2. So we can get the location of the center of mass of this body. So we know the center of the body one and the center of body two, but we don't know where is the center of mass. So we will need to get the center of mass of this body. So you know that the center of mass will be equal to the sum of mi di over the total mass of the body. So m1 is I think 12 foot and the distance, and we are calculating the center of mass from all. So we calculate the, all the distances from all, and we know that this is, will be 3.5. Okay, let me get the charger for my laptop very quick. Good now. 
Okay, we will multiply the uh, 12 and I think we will have the units in slugs, so it will be 12 over 32.2 and we multiply by 3.5 plus 4 over 32.2 and we multiply by the distance d which will be 0.5 and actually we have all the distances from here and we divide by the total mass which is 0.4969 and this will give us the x bar and this x bar will be at 2.74 foot so it will be something here so we get the x bar and the center of percussion as we write it before it's q node I node over M, and what we mean by M is the total M, multiplied by the X bar, we got I node is equal to 4.917 over the mass 0.496, X bar is 2.74, and this should give us 3.611 foot. So it will be after this three, so it's something here. Does anybody have any question on this problem? Okay, so this is just a revision. I know that you guys uh, took almost all of the this content in the uh, in the static class, but I have to like uh, revise on it so I make sure that you understand the concept very well because we will be using the center of mass all over the entire uh, three chapters, 17, 18, and 19. All right, so with this, uh, let's move to a new topic, which is the rigid body Newtonian kinetics. I mean, like, let's apply this concept of center of mass to rigid body Newtonian kinetics. Okay, so for rigid body Newtonian kinetics, we will be doing the same thing like what we did with particles. We need to draw a free body diagram of the body and also a kinetic diagram. And as you know, for the free body diagram, you will have to put all the forces on the body. So the body, if the body has weight, so you will put the weight like this. And if it's external forces, F1 and maybe some forces F2 and some moments C because with rigid bodies we will see moments and F4 and we need to put all of these forces on the body like this and we call this free body diagram and if and you will have to draw it in your homework problems and for the partial credit in the uh, quizzes and exams and for kinetic diagram we know that the kinetic diagram we set the axes like we say this is x axis and this is y axis and we put the second the right hand side of the newtonian kinetics terms like what we did in particles we say this is the m a x and this is the m a y but for rigid bodies we will have another term which is the i bar multiplied by alpha something like that. And the equations is similar to the to the uh, particle Newtonian kinetics. It's the sum fx will be equal to the mass multiplied by ax and the sum of f in the y direction on the body, it's may. And the sum of moments about the centroid will be equal to I bar multiplied by alpha. So this is moment about the centroid. And actually, sometimes it's more convenient and more easier that you take the moment um, about any point other than the centroid. Like, let's assume that you have a force here and you have a force here. It's more convenient that you take the moment about this point because you will be canceling this force and this force and this force because all these forces pass with this point and will not exert any moment about this point. So if we want to take a moment about any other point B, so I mentioned the moment about point B, will be equal to the moment about 
the centroid plus and actually yeah we can keep it as a vector and this will be rg with respect to b cross product by m a vector so let's see what is this so here we have i bar alpha bar if you want to take the moment about this point so b you will have to draw a vector from b to g to the centroid like this rg with respect to b and multiply this vector in a cross product by the vector that has the combination of max and may so it's something let's assume that the other vector will be something like that this is ma vector so you will need to multiply these two vectors the r crossed by ma and we will get another quantity and actually what is easier and what this mean so let's assume that this is our kinetic diagram and you have max here and M A Y, and this is the moment, and you take the moment here, so you, you are taking the moment of M A X and M A Y, and if we have this as width W, and this is height H, so if you are taking the moment at B, it will be I bar alpha plus max multiplied by this distance and actually be careful about the direction because the positive direction that we assume is this way so i alpha is in this way so this is the positive k hat but ax is in different direction so it should be negative if you take the moment about uh, max about point b it will be negative multiplied by w over 2 sorry, by the height over two, because this is h over two. And this will be plus the moment of may, and the moment of may will be something like that in the positive direction, so it will be may multiplied by w over two. And this should be the resultant of this multiplication, the RGB, so you either get the moment of these two quantities about this point, or you get the RGB vector and multiply it by the MA vector and do cross pro resultant. So this is how you uh, can get the moment about any point on uh, a rigid body. And actually we will be expanding this concept and uh, see how this equation will be applied to uh, rectilinear translation, curve linear translation, fixes axis rotation, but this is the general equation if you have all the motion. So this is for general plane motion. If you have translation and you have rotation, so this is all the equations. If you uh, only have translation, so the body is translating, is not rotating, so this will be equal to zero because there is no moment, because there is no rotation, because the rotation needs moment to the body needs moment to rotate so if the body is translating and is not rotating so all the moments all these moments will be equal to zero even if it's a uh, rectilinear translation so the moments will be equal to zero and we will only have fx and fy but if we uh, have a fixed axis rotation so that means that the body at at this point is fixed and is not moving so the sum of the forces of x and y at this body because it is not moving here at this point it will be zero but it has rotation so these two will be equal to zero and we will only have moments for fixed axis uh, rotation and we will be uh, discussing this and solving uh, problems uh, and, and next uh, uh, I think, yeah, we have a lecture tomorrow, so we will be expanding this concept tomorrow. And yeah, that's all for now. And if you have questions, just like stay and ask. And if you don't, uh, uh, see you guys tomorrow. Um, I had a quick question about yesterday's lecture. 
Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, so yesterday's lecture, I could not access during the time um, in which, I'm not sure if it was just the Zoom was not. Um, okay, uh, can you try, because I have it on my channel. Did, did you check my channel? It's. I was I was going to look at the the YouTube channel, but I can go. I'll go ahead and see if it's on there now. Yeah, because I saw that it got uh, forty views. Oh yeah, then I'm probably am just not. Can you try again the link that I sent? If not, yeah, absolutely. Just, okay, so whenever if you if you are like have the links that I posted on the. Uh, working so you go to my youtube channel and hit uh, videos or playlists so easier is fine so when you go to videos you will find uh, the uh, the lecture number 24 and lecture number 25 so you yeah. can access okay, there it is. yeah i see it on the on the youtube channel so i, m I must have just missed it on the the zoom call yesterday Oh, actually, we didn't have a Zoom call yesterday. Uh, I sent an announcement and told you guys that I recorded the lecture and tried to listen. To, did you get the announcement? I yeah, I missed the announcement. That's what it was. So that was okay. that was my bad. Yeah, but as, right. as, as long as I as long as it's on the YouTube channel, then that is all that is good for me. Okay, sounds good. Right. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. As well. See you tomorrow.